I'm Joseph Nichols, and this is the final project for Group 6. As part of this project, we interviewed Coach Idlett, the track and field throws coach at Weber State University. We found Coach Idlett to be a humble and competent leader, and we will feature his thoughts throughout our presentation. Coach Idlett placed a great deal of emphasis on the importance of empathy, humility, and teachability throughout his interview. One of his chief concerns appeared to be, how do we take these highly competitive and driven athletes, often straight out of high school, and help them to become humble and teachable without causing them to lose their competitive edge? On considering this problem, we found it to be a common paradox facing any organization in a field featuring intense competitive pressure or high stakes such as athletic teams, the military, or even high finance and research. The dilemma is played out frequently in films such as Rocky, Remember the Titans, The Guardian, Top Gun, and other films where a talented protagonist must overcome their ego and humbly accept a mentor's guidance to achieve their true potential. My name is Lauren Olson. I was able to sit down and interview my track and field coach coach Josh Idlett. He is the assistant track and field coach at Weber State University over the men and women's throwing program. He was hired to Weber State in 2021 with nearly 20 years of experience as, as a coach. He has a magnificent beard, as you can see in the picture, and he's a long-term thinker. So he's, he's working to build a program that is conducive to success for the future. I feel like me as a coach, I have to be not only empathetic, but I also have to be uh, open-minded um, and take suggestions. I will now go over a little background on Weber State track and field organization, as well as Coach Josh's background. So for some stats, Coach Josh has coached four school record holders in four years at his previous jobs. In one season, his athletes have hit 73 personal records, and that number is still counting because it is, it is the 2023 season that we are currently in. Weber State Athletics competes at the D1 level in the NCAA Big Sky Conference. We do five events, hammer, javelin, discus, shot put, and weight throw. And then there's two seasons, the indoor season and the outdoor season. In the interview, we asked Coach Josh what he would like to see improved in his program, and he said this. Um, really, it's, uh, it's all about just having that, uh, that positive atmosphere, and I know it can't be positive all the time, and there's going to be rough parts, but um, if you could make those, bring those to a minimum, um, and that we're able to be efficient in our learning and be quicker in our learning, so that we don't keep having like, you know, two steps forward, one step back, stuff like that. To reiterate what Coach Josh had said, he wants to have a positive atmosphere where everyone can learn and grow efficiently and quickly. So we as a group chose the track and field organization for this project because we found it really interesting that throwing is an individual sport as well as a team sport. Everyone has a common goal, but ultimately you're always competing against yourself and trying to throw farther than you've ever thrown. We also found it interesting that when Coach Josh was hired in 2021, he had been hired because the previous coach had quit mid-season. So this put Coach Josh in an interesting position where he had to come into the program that had kind of been like all of the athletes had been let down because their coach had quit and they had been working individually for two or three months during the hiring process of a new coach and when he came in he had to set some ground rules really quickly he had to let everyone know what his purpose was and what he was trying to do with the program and he only had about half of a season to do it and to, to make all of his athletes the best that they could be in that short amount of time. 
Greetings, my name is Nate Smith and I'm going to present the next two slides which cover key evidence from this case that will be used in support of our recommendations as well as some key terms from the textbook to define and contextualize the evidence. During his interview, Coach Idlett made a point to emphasize that one of his main goals with this program was to promote and develop a sense of empathy amongst the athletes. That's one of my main goals in my program is to help the athletes understand and be uh, empathetic to other people and where they come from and, and their backgrounds and, and try to understand them and, and be able to work with them. Because... Our textbook describes major personality traits that are broken up into five categories called the Big Five. There's conscientiousness, which describes traits such as dependable, organized, reliable. Agreeableness, which describes traits such as being warm, kind, or cooperative. Neuroticism describes traits such as being nervous, moody, or emotional. Openness to experience implies folks who are curious, imaginative, or creative. And extroversion, which includes traits such as being talkative, sociable, and passionate. If empathy is the goal, how does one get there? How can the coach promote and develop empathy amongst his team's athletes? According to the article from 2017, referenced at the bottom of this slide, entitled Associations Between Empathy and Big Five Personality Traits Among Chinese Undergraduate Medical Students, in order for there to be empathy, two key Big Five traits must exist first, and those are conscientiousness and agreeableness. In other words, conscientiousness and agreeableness predict empathy. It will be essential for the coach to ensure that these two traits either exist sufficiently or are developed sufficiently amongst his athletes to ensure that empathy can be possible. Moving on to the next slide. They, they get into the real world, they're going to have to work with different people from all over the place. So I feel like it's a, a good way to kind of like, not test run, but kind of put them into the different uncomfortable experiences and and help them grow that way. Here are some other key terms from the textbook that apply to Coach Idlet's program. The first is short-term orientation versus long-term orientation. The coach mentioned in his interview that it's sometimes a struggle for athletes to transition from high school sports to college level sports, but learning how to work with and get along with their new college level teammates is key for their success, and this is an example of the short-term orientation. Additionally, the coach said that his athletes need to also learn how to work with and get along with people from all around the world from diverse backgrounds because after college, when they get into their careers, that will be their reality. They'll need to use those coping skills and to continue developing the ability to work with different people for the rest of their lives, and this would be an example of long-term orientation. Say when you come out of high school, typically a lot of high schoolers, um, when, they, when they come on a Division I level, they, have a, they think highly of themselves. Some of them are overly cocky, some of them aren't, but they, they do think highly of themselves, which is a good trait. But you ultimately, you want somebody that thinks highly of themselves, but is also uh, humble. Zero acquaintance comes into play here as well. The coach indicated that it was common for athletes fresh out of high school when first introduced to the new college level division that their general cockiness and their abilities could make terrible first impressions and could often be a detriment to themselves and other teammates in developing empathy. He said that he ultimately wants people who think highly of themselves, in other words they have self-confidence, but that they're also humble and don't brag about it. Stuff like that. You want them to be, you want them to be con uh, confident but, but humble and uh, you know, know know what they're capable of and, and not scared to push their limits and stuff, but as far as... Openness to experience is another of the big five personality traits that is relevant here because Coach Idlet expressed that he wants his athletes to not only be confident in their abilities, yet humble as mentioned before, but that they also be unafraid to push their limits. Pushing their limits will also help them individually reach new personal records which will also help elevate the team at the same time. When asked whether any negative personality traits existed on the team, that could be detrimental to his program, Coach Eilert replied in the affirmative and identified traits that aligned with another Big Five trait, neuroticism. For example, those being cocky, being conceited, and being self-involved. My name is Jenna Reed. I'll be presenting the next two slides. Um, I'd like to go over a simple formula for encouraging humility in teams. Um, Coach Idet, during the interview, talks about this. Uh, one of the things that I always talk about at the enterprise, one thing is, 1% better every day. It doesn't matter if it's you know on the field, in the classroom, in your personal life, uh, get 1% better. And because if you look at a, the whole body of like a year, a 1% adds up quite a bit after a year. 
Um, a lot of athletes have heard this phrase to improve their game by 1% each and every day. Um, not strictly just in their sport, but Coach Idet teaches that they should be doing this overall in their daily lives as well. As we know, small changes lead to big results. So as each athlete is improving 1% each day, over time, that's going to amount to a lot of improvements, um, whether that's in their sport and throwing or also um, in their personal lives. To go over uh, the SWOT analysis of the Weaver State throws team. Um, some of the strengths that we came up with are a mix of young and experienced athletes. As you mesh these two, there's a wonderful opportunity to um, encourage mentorship to help these young freshmen also compete at the level of the seniors who have had multiple years more in their collegiate career than they do. Um, another one is the coach models humility. I think this is key in any sports and in, in life, in, in reality. To be able to be humble um, will get you places that you didn't think you could go. Um, the weaknesses in college sports, there's a lot of turnover for athletes. I mean, obviously, every four to five years, an athlete is graduating or moving on. Um, that's always going to be a weakness, and focusing on that is is key as well to to amplify these students while they're still in their collegiate career. Um, Recruiting is big as well. Um, that's hard for any college team to create um, an environment to be able to recruit to get bigger athletes at their schools. The opportunities, like I mentioned, mentorship um, is huge. Um, the 1% better each day is also applicable to their post-college life, so I think that's important as well. And then the threats, um, there's always going to be disruptive personalities. Um, the key is to catch those before they get too bad. Uh, Nate kind of talks about neuroticism and the the fact that if we catch it early, um, it should be better for for the team as a whole. Uh, the key is to to weed out the the bad players to be able to make um, a better team and situation for everyone. I am Rob Frankie, and I will address our recommendations for Coach Idlet. So you know, having a having a, having a supportive um, family atmosphere is uh, is conducive to success because uh, you get the support that you need, and um, you know you're able to to work things out with other people, and they're able to push you in in the you know the right direction, and you're able to take that those suggestions and that criticism and 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 grow. As a retired non-commissioned officer from the United States Army, I draw upon nearly a quarter of a century of experience developing leaders. I will also liberally quote from the Army's Field Manual 6-22 Leadership Development. There is no more important task for the United States Army than developing its people to lead others to defeat any enemy anywhere. Let me re-emphasize that. The Army thinks that there is no more important task than to develop leaders. The sports team is no different. The leader of a sports team is the coach, but there are many more informal leaders waiting to be found from within the team, to be identified, trained, and nurtured for the betterment of the team. Each leader-subordinate interaction is a development opportunity. Every great coach desires a highly effective team. Psychological research has confirmed that the following elements are the minimum prerequisites for an effective team. Strong leadership, role clarity, mutual trust, sound information exchange protocols, a compelling reason to be a team. An effective team also has the following attributes. Clear understanding of the team's objectives and goals, a range of skills and know-how among team members to handle tasks effectively. Variety of personality types and strength among its team members. A high degree of respect and trust both individually and for each other's contributions to team performance. And an effective recognition and reward system. The culture's role has several components. 
building rapport, gathering and analyzing information, addressing the gaps, narrowing focus, setting goals, planning development, and promoting action. Coaches involved in developmental action should find a balance between challenge and the learner's perception of ability to achieve incremental improvement. Our first recommendation that we have is to develop a strong mentorship program between Coach Idlet and his team and team leaders, and more importantly, between those team leaders and the rest of the team. This is most important for the newest members of the team. Mentorship is a voluntary developmental relationship that exists between a person of greater experience and a perser, person of lesser experience that is characterized by mutual trust and respect. Mentoring is a powerful tool for personal and professional development. Mentoring generally improves individual performance, retention, morale, personal and team development, and team progression. Mentoring offers many opportunities for mentors and mentees to improve their leadership, interpersonal and technical skills, as well as achieve personal and team objectives. Our second recommendation is to use a personality test to help guide and individualize training. Three of the most popular personality tests are the Big Five, the Enneagram, and the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. Every team role has its strengths and weaknesses. Being aware of those can help you create a more balanced team. Build on these strengths and minimize the weaknesses. You can be aware of gaps on your team with regular assessments not only individual progression, but also observing how individuals interact with the rest of the team. It is essential to review team roles and responsibilities regularly so you can build high performing teams. Balanced teams increase team productivity. Understanding and utilizing Belbin's nine team roles can help a create a balanced work environment so your team can be more productive. Our final recommendation is to utilize team building exercises to build high performing and successful teams. In conclusion, our problem statement was, how do we take highly confident and competitive athletes and help them to become teachable without losing their competitive edge? We've named some recommendations, such as the mentorship program, team building exercises, and using personality tests to help guide and individualize training. We believe that empathy and humility in the service of competitiveness and ambition create good leaders and create good model values. Here you can see the sources that we use to help lead our research and our organization of this project. We want to give a big thank you to Coach Josh Eidlett for allowing us to interview him and for him giving us insight into his organization that is throwing for Weber State Athletics. Mm -hmm.